Oh no, my camera is the wrong way. Hi guys, I'm having some technical difficulties. I hope you can hear me. Um, oh, there we go. Ah, hi guys, I hope you can hear me. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the delay. I, for some reason, I couldn't go live from my computer, so I had to go on my cell phone. Um, so please, if you could let me know if you can hear me um that would be awesome um just sent me a quick um little comment or something i would really appreciate that it looks like they, there are some people who are watching um i can't really see who it is but oh there we go allison she thank you so much great <laughs> i'm glad oh i was already nervous enough about doing this q a it's my first time and now i also had the technical issues um but thanks to gregory lucas i i i you know we figured it out he kind of worked walked me through you know how to get it on my phone so we're just gonna um do it on the phone um just kind of waiting for a few more people to show up i know people are kind of trickling in i can see that um I hope you guys are all doing well. <sighs> I think I need to take a deep breath for a second here. Um, yeah, that was a little stressful, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but, you know, you always have to be prepared for, for some sort of issue, I guess, when it comes to technology. It's all great when it works, but when it doesn't, it's it's a bit of an issue. So... Anyways, um, uh, just while we wait for a few more people to show up, uh, if you guys want to um, just tell me a little bit of where you're at, you know, where you, you know, tuning in from, um, any, que any other questions that you may have. I know I have some of you guys already. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks for understanding. I appreciate that, Allison. Um, so anyways, I'm going to just pull up the questions that I already had just so that they're ready um, to get answered and then um, we'll be getting started shortly. I'll start with a little bit of information, some basics, just to catch up everybody so that we're all kind of on the, on the same page. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> It's good to see you guys all. Um, let me just find one more thing that I had here because I also did a lot of research on the different um, preventatives because there are a lot of different different ones now um, available, new ones and chemical, you know, especially the chemical ones. And since I don't use them all that much, um, you know. I gotta have a cheat sheet to know what is in everything because yeah again I don't use them that much. Good morning Krista, good morning Pauline from Austin, Texas from Lake in the Hills. Ah uh, Krista, yeah well you're close. Uh, Tanya, good morning. Um, Allison, you're from Singapore so yeah <laughs> it's late at night. I hope um, I won't put you to sleep. <laughs> Uh, hi everyone. I know there were some more uh, people that were gonna tune in including my sister and my niece They are getting a, a puppy very shortly. Uh, it was just born a few a few well a couple weeks ago or so now um, so that will be awesome to kind of guide them through and and give them a little bit of input um, on all of these things Good morning, good morning. Antioch, Illinois. Hi, Robin. Um, alternatives to heartwarmer, flea and tick. No problem. It's COVID video issues. I'm a teacher. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, good morning, Deborah. <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely flea and tick and and heartworm season that started um, it depends a little bit on where you live at least for us here in Chicago heartworm season is just kind of starting um, I know that other areas in the country further south it's more of a year-round um, thing that's going on 
So, hello Yael. I hope I said the name right. <laughs> uh, good morning from Southern California where there are hardly any mosquitoes. I used to live in, in that area in San Diego and, um, well, Del Mar to be exact. Um, I don't remember seeing a lot of mosquitoes back then, but it's been a while. Hi Kim from Alabama, hello. Welcome, welcome. It's probably already nice and warm where you are. We're just starting with a little bit of summer weather. It's been quite slow here. So anyways, I think we're going to get started so that you guys can go on and move on with your days. Uh, so I wanted to chat a little bit about um, heartworm um, or let, let's just say the cycles from the different, um, um, you know, pests, because it's important to understand what their life cycles are in order to then also know how to go about um, treating and, and preventing. So I'm going to, if, if you guys, um, I don't know if you guys can open that up as well. Let me just go back to my page real quick because maybe the live is, I don't know, showing on my page that it's happening. Um, it doesn't look like it. Um, okay. Um, yeah, you probably can't be opening up two different things, but what I'll do in the event, um, information that I had sent you, I'm going to, uh, post some comments as well. Hi Kim. Um, and I will, uh, post this, uh, post some photos and things like that. Um, just so that, uh, to kind of help with, with discussing different um, things. So I'm gonna um, see where, okay, where did that now go? Okay, well, that did not work out quite the way I planned. Well, anyways, um, no, screen share isn't gonna work. I'm, I'm on my phone right now. So anyways, it uh, doesn't matter. I'll just um, talk you through um, all of that. It's, it's no big deal. Uh, so anyway, so for heartworm, uh, let me just start with heartworm because um, that's a big subject as well. And uh, what I find in, in my practice is that sometimes people aren't quite aware what heartworm is and how the cycle goes and, and all of that. And it's really important uh, for everything that we know. Hi, Diane. Hello. Um, so anyways, um, heartworm... Um, cycle requires two hosts. One is the mosquito and one is the dog or the cat. And the way it works is that we have the adult heartworm in the in the heart of the um, dog and these adult heartworms they mate and they make microfilaria. Those are the little babies they make. And these little microfilaria they float around in the blood and when a mosquito comes and um, starts sucking on, on the animal, it will pick up these microfilaria and um, will continue to develop the microfilaria into the infective larvae, which is the larvae 3, the stage 3. And that takes about 14 days or longer, depending on what the weather is like, how warm it is outside, um, etc. So... <clears throat> Once these larvae have become the infective larvae and the mosquito bites another dog, um, then these larvae will be inf um, transmitted into the dog where they go through a tissue phase. So they kind of wander around the tissue for a few days and they be continue to evolve until they become adults and, and end up in the, in the heart. So it takes about 14 days or longer for the mosquitoes to, to have the infective larvae and it takes about um, four, three to four months post the infe post infection in the dog for the um, heartworm, for the adult heartworms to show up and it takes another uh, couple of months or so for them to actually start to produce offspring. So. Basically, what that means is that it takes about six to seven months until we have uh, more, you know, microfilaria being produced, more babies being produ produced. I hope that makes sense. Um, and so when the microfilaria uh, float around in the blood, we can test for those and we can also test for the adults. So usually when you go to your vet for a heartworm test, what they test is for the adult heartworm. So not for the larvae that come in and, and wander around, but for the adults. So that means that when you have a puppy 
um, it, there's no point in, me, in testing any type of um, heartworm, uh, you know, doing any heartworm tests because there won't be any um, antigen there. So the test that you do that is done is for the adults. And then we also have a test for microfilaria, which is, uh, you know, test for the babies. Um, so we can do both of those. Uh, but again, it takes about six to seven months for the um, tests to be to be showing heartworm uh, in a dog. And if they're only male heartworm, then we um, get a negative test. So tests are not 100% either. That's why I like to do it on a regular basis because, uh, you know, every at least every six months, because that way we get a little bit more information of, you know, what might be going on in between. Um, so anyway, so that was the, for the life cycle of heartworm and there are some conditions that are necessary for transmission, for example, the right climate. So the temperature has to be um, high at a certain temp. I mean, the temperature has to be above 57 degrees um, consistently for um, any sort of um, development of the larva in the mosquito to even be happening. And if it goes below 57 degrees, there is no development happening. The, the, it just basically stunts that. Um, the mosquito um, also, and that's very logic, but <laughs> uh, the mosquito has to have sucked uh, blood from an infected dog about two weeks before in order to be able to infect your animal. So in our neighborhood in the Chicago, Chicago Illinois area and other northern parts, the prevalence of heartworm disease is very low. So even if you have a lot of mosquitoes in your neighborhood, um, unless they actually have infective larvae, there is no way that they can infect your dog. So that needs to be happen. Uh, the mosquito also has to be a female because the females are the ones that, that suck the blood. Um, so if you don't have any female mosquitoes around, then nothing is going to happen. Uh, there are also different mosquito species that allow the development of, of worms. There are about 70 different um, species, but not all of them allow the development of heartworm in them. Uh, in them. And um, the larvae, you know, once the mosquito actually bites the dog, it leaves a little droplet next to the injection site. And that's where the larvae are. So if the climate is really dry, this little droplet may, may dry out. Dry out and the larva may die even before it starts to get into the dog. And then last but not least, there also needs to be a weakened immune system because if you have a really, really healthy dog, um, then the immune system will also take care of, of much of that uh, by itself. So, um, uh, so temperatures 57 degrees and even even then, um, it may not come to an infective larva because at six, it takes about a month for them to develop into infective larvae at 64 degrees Fahrenheit. And a lot of mosquitoes only live about three to four weeks. So that means that the infection may not happen because the mosquito may die before it, it even gets back, um, you know, to infecting another dog. Um, and then um, I'm just going to look through the questions um, here. Alice, um, she said that uh, monthly heartworm medication does not address um, the issue, does it? Um, and I think you said something else. Um, let me just scroll. Um, yeah, heartworm medications don't prevent, they just kill. Well, heartworm medications, uh, they kill the larvae. And they do, uh, yeah, they're not really a preventative because they go in, they kill something, and then they leave. Um, the heartworm medication only stays in the system for about 72 hours. So it's a little bit of a misnomer uh, to call it a preventative. Um, and the heartworm uh, medication does work uh, backwards, Tanya. That's very true. Um, so the dog gets infected with the larvae and the larvae float around and then we give the heartworm preventative and all the larvae that got in, you know, are killed in that process. Um, but then once the heartworm medication is out of the system, more larvae can come in and then they're going to get killed again by the next uh, round of heartworm preventative that is given. Um... 
Yeah, sorry about, you know, you guys got a little bit of a no late notification, some of you. Um, I understand that. And then Gene Cook, um, you have a co old cocker, uh, cocker spaniel and he has seizures every three months and is not medicated because he only gets them every so often. Yes, um, a lot of these heartworm uh, preventatives, they uh, actually can cause seizures. So with a dog that already has seizures, you have to be very careful. I usually don't recommend um, heartworm preventative for these dogs. Um, I, I usually recommend more of an herbal preventative. Um, that might be a better um, idea for them so that their nervous system doesn't get triggered excessively and you know the seizures don't get worse um uh, especially some of the newer drugs um the moxidectin not that it's that new but it's being used in in some of these heartworm preventatives such as um the proheart um proheart is an injectable and it was removed from the market because it was causing deaths and um it was unfortunately reintroduced and recently they actually uh, created a ProHeart 12, which is a, pre is a preventative for 12 months total. Um, and ProHeart 6 was for six months, so it stays in the system for that long. And it was already killing the ones on ProHeart um, 6, the dogs. And now they're, inc they're increasing it to a 12 months um, you know, uh, injectable, which makes absolutely no sense. Um, to have something that would kill you know dogs even more because th what happens is they actually increase the moxidectin which is the active ingredient to a uh, to three times what it was in ProHeart 6 so definitely definitely I would highly highly more I mean warn you not to use that one because that one is definitely a, a big killer uh, of dogs and lots of side effects you know including neurologic signs especially um, lots of vomiting diarrhea injection site issues agitation um, hiding pacing scratching you know i have a whole list here uh, anaphylaxis elevated liver enzyme immune mediated blood problems cardiovascular disease tumors including mast cell lymphosarcoma histiocytoma so Definitely not something that you would ever want to use on your um, dog. There are other ones that are much safer if you are living in an area that's a little bit more um, endemic where you have a lot more heartworm. Um, you may have to go more with a chemical um, drug uh, to do that, but um, definitely stay away from the pro heart um, of the world uh, because the problem is that with all of these preventatives once they're in the system there's absolutely no way of getting them back out so you basically have to sort of wait it out and um, a lot of times they've also not done um, sufficient studies to see how long they actually stay in the system i just heard a story the other day of um, someone who used brevecto um, which is a flea and um, tick preventative and even a year later, after the one-time dose of, of Brevecto, the fleas, uh, the ticks were still dying on the dog. Um, so we don't really know um, what all of these things are doing. But, you know, once they're in the system, they're, we can't take them back out. Um, so we're kind of um, stuck with that. Um, so when we talk about heartworm um, preventatives, you know, I, I know most of you would like to know what the safest one is. Um, one of the probably the safest one would be Interceptor, which is a milbenmycin. And um, there are also different dosages um, on that that had been published uh, in the past, are not so much used here in the States, but more so in Europe. And it's called the Safe Heart Protocol which actually uses a much smaller dose that just kills the, the, the heartworm. Um, let me just check real quick because I forgot how what the dose is. Here we go. Safe heart dose is a one-fifth of the interceptor dosage, uh, but that only works for heartworm. Um, so it wouldn't kill any of the other intestinal parasites. At, the, at a higher dose, it will also kill intestinal parasites. 
And that brings me to another point. Um, when it comes to intestinal, uh, to some of these heartworm preventatives, I would definitely stay away from all the pluses or the maxes or, or any of the ones that do multiple things at the same time. Um, because for one, an animal does not need to be dewormed for intestinal parasites every month. I prefer to do fecal um, testing just to see if they actually have parasites. And then um, for the other multis, for example, like um, the ones like Revolution and some of the other, some of those, they have both um, tick and flea preventative as well as heartworm. And it's always best if you do go with chemicals to spread them apart so that you don't give both at the same time, the same day. And always do some detox afterwards. That is very important. I usually recommend at least doing a little bit of milk thistle for seven days after any sort of heartworm uh, or any sort of preventative that's that's chemical. Um, since we are on the chemicals, on the chemical preventatives, I just briefly want to mention some of the newer ones that came out for um, for fleas and ticks, including Brevecto, Nexgard, um, Simperica, Credelio. They all contain isoxazolines, which are very, very toxic uh, to the body. They have had, um, since, since they came out until... Um, in the last number I saw up to July of 2018, they had over 50,000 um, complaints, um, reported complaints about uh, adverse reactions. Um, but since we all know that most people don't really report any sort of adverse reactions, there's that's only a very small percentage. So I think it was about 1%. That's kind of the estimate. So if you kind of multiply that by 100, then you have a lot of animals that have had adverse reactions to um, some of these drugs. So NexGuard, Brevecto, Brevecto Plus for cats, Simperica, and then Simperica Trio um, is even probably even more dangerous because not only does it contain what's in ProHeart, it also contains the isoxazoline and on top of that pyranthal. So I would highly recommend staying away from any of these drugs that do everything because that's, that's a big killer uh, for the animal. So stay with the ones that are um, safer, the ones that go get into the system and are out. That's much better. Um, so if, if you have a lot of fleas and, and ticks in your neighborhood and you have to do something about flea and tick prevention, chemically because it's so bad or you yourself have a lot of reactions. Um, I have one client, um, she does everything holistic except for that just because she gets major reactions from fleas and tick bites and um, has autoimmune issues herself. Um, so she just has to do it uh, in order to uh, protect herself uh, from that. Um, but definitely better choices are, you know, interceptor as I mentioned for heartworm. And then for, um, for fleas and ticks, um, definitely the uh, topicals would be better, such as Frontline, for example. Um, because the thing is, too, if you're actually giving a heartworm, uh, a flea and tick preventative orally, the fleas and the ticks still have to suck on the dog or attach in order to get killed. And for killing ticks, it can take up to 48 hours. And that's plenty of time for Lyme disease and other, um, you know, um, tick-borne microbes to get into your dog. So it's really not a very, very good idea, um, you know, preventatively-wise. And um, if, especially in a dog that has flea and tick, uh, flea allergies, if a flea has to suck on you know, to, to get killed, it's also not all that helpful because the allergies will continue to be perpetuated. So with fleas, you know, we can have regular itching just because fleas are there and are stinging kind of like we get a mosquito bite. But some dogs, they have flea um, sensitivity to the saliva of the flea and they just become, um, you know, crazy itchy. Um, even if it's just one flea that, that kind of attached and sucked on them. Um, so though that's a little bit of a different thing, but anyway, so that's just kind of to talk a little bit about the, um, 
preventatives, you know, that are chemical, but I definitely do want to move on to some of the other ones um, because that's really interesting, as, you know, because obviously as a holistic vet, I'm always trying to do what's most um, safe for the animals. And um, uh, so definitely want to talk about that, but let me just see what other questions came up here so I don't miss anything. Yeah, in Singapore, the vets always recommend NexGuard Spectra because it covers both both internal and external parasites. Yeah, um, I guess, you know, you guys just have to be all very educated about these um, subjects because you're the advocate of your animals. And, and in the end, I think that a lot of you probably know more about all of this in order you know to to keep your animals safe um, more than some of the vets because you know some of the vets probably don't do as much of the research and um, you know considering the fact that there are a lot of people out there who um, are, are posting on Facebook I mean there are so many Facebook um, groups now about preventatives and and the issues that have resulted from preventative use um, it, it kind of tells you something. Um, so, you know, if you're more holistically oriented, definitely um, you have to do your own research and, you know, you can't rely on, on conventional vets that because they just don't learn these things. Um, they, you know, have a different, a bit of a different focus than holistic, not to say that they're not good or at what they do and everything. We need them. Um, I love my, my colleagues. Um, so, um, all right, just tuned in, but did you mention HWF by Amber Technology yet? No, I have not. Um, so Glenda, that's very good. Um, thanks for bringing that, that up. HWF stands for heartworm free. It's a herbal remedy that can be used as a heartworm preventative and also to treat heartworm. I uh, have had two patients that um, were heartworm positive because they came from the South. Um, which is most of the dogs that we see here uh, with heartworm. And I have to say, I don't see a lot of heartworm positive dogs. Um, so, you know, for some of the Southern people, I may not have as much uh, input, um, but heartworm free uh, HWF from Amber Technology is something that I do recommend in my practice as one of the preventatives. Um, the only caveat is that there have not been any um, studies done on the e efficacy of it. Um, it's all more word of mouth, um, anecdotal evidence. Um, <clears throat> but as I said, I had two dogs that were heartworm pos positive and they um, did the HWF protocol uh, to get rid of, or the Amber Technology protocol, I should say, and they both turned um, heartworm negative. Um, slow kill process where they don't have, uh, restrict it as far as with, um, tra traditional heartworm treatment if a dog is heartworm positive um, they um, have to be um, on restricted just because um, as the heartworm um, you know the parasites are being killed within the system in the heart um, some of these parts of the heartworm can get lodged into the lungs and cause emboli, <clears throat> which is, uh, can be very life-threatening. So they can basically, they cannot exercise uh, for quite some time um, until the, the whole um, issue is resolved. Um, so with the heart HWF from Amber Technology, they don't have to because it's a slow kill method and uh, lives and, and not have a lot of side effects um, as a result. Um, I also recommend it as a preventative um, in my area, but I also tell people um, to do a heartworm test at least every six months if they do use it, just because there's no you know studies and, um, well, I just want to make sure that my patients don't end up with heartworm and I'd rather, you know, test earlier. Ah, here we go. Sorry, there was some disconnect. I don't have the very best connection here at my house with my cell phone. Thankfully, we came I came back. Um, all right, let's see what other questions. Um, lots of waving. Uh, uh, backward. 
it just got notified. All right, let's move forward. So we did that. Hello, some more people that I I did answer the heartworm and flea medication. Um, that's good. I used HeartGuard, no plus. That's very good. Uh, thoughts on Milbegard? I'm not familiar with Milbegard, but just from the sound of it, it sounds like it could be uh, Milbemycin, which is the same as Interceptor. Um, I would have to look that up. Um, and yes, giving a heartworm preventative every 45 days. Um, that works and then using adored beast liver detox perfect milk thistle or sammy all very good um, milk thistle should be the dose for a 55 pound dog uh, that would very much depend on on what you're using if you're using a tincture or an herb um, i would just follow the instructions um, that's on the label um, herbal chews for flea and tick preventatives um, i can't say I've heard of herbal chews unless you're referring to some of these garlic supplements out there. Um, garlic is definitely something that um, is a good idea for, um, you know, to prevent fleas and, and ticks because um, there's some scent that comes out from garlic. Best though is to use fresh garlic because the fresh garlic that's all chopped up uh, we'll have the allicin in it, which also has a lot of medical, uh, good medical properties. So putting a little bit of um, garlic into the food with your dog, uh, with your dog's food is great. Um, and I know there's always the, the question about toxicity of garlic, uh, but in the study they did, um, you know, they found that, that they really had to use a huge amount of garlic to even um, cause any issues. So if you have a chihuahua, you would have to give it a whole clove a whole bulb of garlic, which, you know, no chihuahua <laughs> or no dog is going to eat that much garlic. I, I doubt it anyways. Um, so garlic guidelines, um, a half a clove of garlic per 10 pound of body weight. Um, that would kind of be appropriate. And I would not go over two cloves of garlic, uh, no matter what the size is. Um, and then, um, so let's just stick with the herbals uh, for a little minute. Um, with um, There are different things that you can use um, topically. Um, a lot of shampoos, for example, Kin and Kind, they have a, a shampoo that will also allow to kill um, fleas. Um, using a flea comb is very important if you do have fleas and even if you don't have fleas during flea season if you can flea comb your dog before you even get into the house uh, for, after a walk that probably would be a good idea because that way you don't spread a lot of fleas um, into your house because fleas they do tend to uh, multiply very quickly um, and then they drop the, the eggs and then the eggs turn into larvae and the larvae then turn into mosquitoes. Um, so there's a lot of multiplication going on. So the more you can prevent that from coming into your house, the better. Um, and then there's all sorts of um, things that you can also uh, do as far as, you know, before you go out on a trail, for example, on a hike, you can spray them with a little bit of um, something that has apple cider vinegar in it, um, essential oils. Um, just to kind of repel the, the fleas, there are different um, recipes and I found some um, good ones from Dr. Becker, obviously, she's always very resourceful. Uh, so she has a, a couple of recipes um, and I will post them um, later. But it basically has um, lemon, it can have lemon juice, uh, water, and then some vanilla extract that apparently is also a bit of a deterrent, and catnip oil. Um, catnip oil is actually quite um, effective. It's very similar to um, DEET, which is a chemical that um, is a deterrent for uh, fleas and ticks. So it's as effective as that. And it's also good for mosquitoes, um, lemon, lemongrass, eucalyptus, geranium, um, essential oils. All of these things are good as well. If you have a short haired dog, you can also add a little bit of coconut oil to their coat before you go out because the uh, uh, fleas and ticks don't really like the coconut oil. They just kind of fall off. Um, obviously not too much, otherwise you're going to have a greasy sofa. Um, um, it may not work as well for dogs with long hair. 
Um, so lots of sprays. Um, I also use Vetri Repel, which is a spray that's already pre-made, but you can definitely make your own um, tincture that way, you know, your own spray. Uh, that's very easy to do. Um, then for fleas, uh, for ticks, a, a really good thing um, when you come home from a hike, just take a lint roller and roll it over their coat. And that way you'll catch out catch a lot of the fleas, uh, sorry, the, a lot of the ticks that are still kind of wandering around, the, but that haven't gone into the deeper crevices, um, especially in the long haired um, dogs. And then checking is very, very important. Um, you know, do a daily check of, um, of uh, ticks just to make sure there are no not crawling around and also check yourselves um, because you know ticks can kind of also gravitate to um, dropping on a human when you walk through the, the fruit through the woods um, you could also put a shirt on your dog that would also help to prevent the amount of ticks that may um, get on them um, Internally, there was a study that was done in Germany with cystus tea, which is rock rose um, that grows kind of more in the Mediterranean areas. And um, it has all sorts of really um, great effects, antiviral, uh, prevents HIV, for example, to infect um, cells. It's also, uh, it also kills Borrelia, which is um, the um, bacteria that causes Lyme disease. Uh, it's an antioxidant and, and does all sorts of good things. And they did a study in Germany, and it wasn't a study that was published. It was a, a holistic vet who um, was just doing some trials, and um, they did that with 48 dogs. And 32 of these dogs, they were getting some cystus tea every day for 20 days. Um, 10 of these, the 48 dogs, they received frontline, and then there were six control animals that did not get anything. And what they found is that the ones that were getting the cystus T, they actually had zero to two ticks. The ones with frontline, they obviously had less ticks as well, but they still had some as well. And the control animals, they had an average of 150 ticks in that 20 day period. So you can see zero to two ticks with cystus and doing nothing, 150 ticks. So that's, a, that's pretty good. Uh, so cystus T can be purchased online. Um, there are different companies, including BioPure, that sells it, um, and others just find, make sure it's an organic one. And it takes about five days to take effect. So you want to give it for five days, and, and then um, you, know, you should start seeing a difference. Um, I actually just talked to one of my clients yesterday who uses Sister's Tea for his um, dog because he lives on a farm and there's tons of ticks. You know, there's some wooded areas as well. And he said that he definitely saw a significant decrease in ticks um, uh, in his dog. There are also collars that you can use, the amber stone um, collars that are made from raw amber um, stones that are basically petrified resin. And you just put them on, you know, around their necks and they're quite pretty. You can, you know, get your own design. Some One of my dogs, he has little skulls included to make it nice and masculine. <laughs> uh, anyways, they're quite pretty to look at. Um, and the way they work is that um, the collar continuously rubs against the, the coat and creates a little bit of an electromagnetic field that then makes the tick, uh, the, the animal look a little bit more like a, a walking bush, for example. And that's very confusing to the ticks because, you know, they don't really want to suck on a bush, right? Um, and then the, the amber collars, um, because it's petrified resin, they also will release a little bit of a scent with, um, with the temperature from, from the body. And that too is a repellent for, for ticks. They don't really, you know, they, they get confused. Because the thing is with a lot of these things that we put on them, it's just more that we create, try to create a little bit of confusion so that they don't quite know what it is that's actually coming along um, as you were walking. Um, so that's that. And then um, there was something about a Ceresto collar somewhere. Yeah, not a huge fan of Ceresto collars um, because they uh, can also cause some, um, you know, some toxicity. So not a huge fan of those. Um, but at least it's something that you can take off. It's not something that goes into the body and stays in there. <clears throat> but um, 
yeah, not a huge fan. There are other colors that you can use. Um, um, I think Dr. Becker has one on Mercola. There's also Alzu. Alzu has a um, also has a spot on. Uh, it has it has geronial oil in it, which is one of the most potent ones um, on the natural side. Um, it stays on there for thirty days as well, unless you wash your dog or your dog goes swimming a lot. Um, so they have the the topical Alzu um, spot on, but then they also have the collar. Uh, so that works as well, but generally for fleas and ticks, you know, it's always best to use multiple approaches, you know, from, from different angles <clears throat> because no, I, I find that none of them really all work just by themselves. Um, and it also depends on how infested, um, your area is. Uh, so if you have a if you're in an area that has a lot of fleas, um, you definitely want to make sure you also treat the environment, and you can treat the environment uh, by doing um, things like uh, you know putting out ne nematodes that will eat the the larvae um, of of the different animal uh, mosquito uh, different insects, including mosquitoes. Uh, so you can do that. Um, there's also things that you can sp um, spray in your house. Um, for example, diatomaceous earth can be used. Um, you can just sprinkle it in the areas where your dog um, lays around because diatomaceous earth will dry out some of these insects um, and kill them that way. Um, let me see. I have a whole lot more that I wrote down here. I just have to find them. I have a whole list. Um, there's also some um, uh, sodium polyborate that can be used. Uh, you can spray that on your carpets, for example, and they will actually they will stay in the carpet even when you vacuum. The only time it would come off is when you steam clean. Um, so diatomaceous earth, um, definitely you want to make sure that it's food grade. I should have mentioned that. And then just doing a lot of vacuuming is very important, especially during the times where they're more prevalent. Uh, fleas and ticks, we see those a lot in the spring and the fall. Um, here in the Chicago area, it was really bad last year, last fall. All of a sudden, we had multiple dogs come in every day with itching and, and fleas. So we ended up with no rooms to put anybody in because all of them had been um, occupied by a dog with fleas that we had to you know, clean first. So that was fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, and then there's also flea stopper. Um, so there are different things out there, um, that can be used, um, you know, inside the house and then outdoors. Uh, we also have, um, tick tubes. Um, they are biodegradable. Um, you can put them out and that will help to kind of, um, you know, decrease the amount of ticks that you have. Um, there's also something called mosquito bar barrier, which is a garlic that you can spray in your yard that will also um, deter some of these um, critters. Um, plant, um, that are, plants that are deer resistant uh, are also helpful. That way you get less deer coming to your yard and dropping off um, ticks. Um, plants such as lavender, sage, mint, wormwood, rosemary, marigolds, etc. are also plants that you can plant that because ticks and fleas don't like them very much. And then also keeping your grass short can help because a lot of these little critters, they kind of like to hide in the moist and, and darker um, areas. Um, so definitely um, that should help a lot. Um, and then let's see. So I talked about amber colors and then sprays. Yes. Um, Yeah, spot-ons are definitely safer, um, Allison, than the oral chews. Um, plus, again, they actually kill things before they attach to the animal, which is always better because we don't really want to have Lyme disease go into the animal, preferably. Um, I guess one word on these um, tick-borne diseases, um, it's a bit of a misnomer because fleas, mites, um, and other insects can also transmit Borrelia, which is um, what causes Lyme disease and Bartonella and, and some of these other, um, you know, chronic infections that, you know, we kind of blame on the ticks. Um, so, you know, it's not just ticks that can cause that. 
And I guess um, that brings me to uh, back to, to testing. Um, I think it's always helpful to also test for tick-borne diseases when you do heartworm testing. It's only a few dollars more, but um, it's so easy to do if you're doing blood work anyway. So I highly recommend um, checking that on a regular basis as well, um, just to make sure that your animals, um, you know, don't have anything. Um, although uh, tick-borne diseases, you know, Lyme and such, they are very good at evading the immune system. So just because the test result comes back as negative doesn't mean they don't have it. And just because the test is positive also doesn't mean that they have it. They may just have been exposed. So testing certainly can help just to kind of, you know, give us a bit of an idea of whether they have had some exposure in the past or not. Um, but it's certainly not um, giving you all the information you need. Um, and all these tick-borne diseases, they, they can cause all sorts of symptoms. Um, Lyme disease is kind of called the great imitator. It can cause all sorts of um, diseases, not just joint issues, but also neurologic issues, including Parkinson's for humans and, and all sorts of um, things, kidney issues. Um, so um, definitely something you'd want to treat, um, but um, I, I know Lyme disease is very scary. Um, at least there's a lot of fear around that out there. Uh, but if it's caught early, it can be treated. And the, the best way or the, the key to treating for, for Lyme disease is to work with how the, the microbe actually evades the immune system. So what I usually do is I check if there's something going on. I usually use muscle testing for that. And then if there's something going on, I will find which herb will you know, work this time. And then I recheck them with muscle testing two to three weeks later, because that's usually about the time it takes for these microbes to kind of find a new strategy to evade whatever I'm giving them right now or what I'm trying to kill them with right now. And so then I switch to something else and then I recheck in two to three weeks and I keep going with that and I switch the, the remedies and I use a lot of herbs. I actually rarely use um, antibiotics. Um, because there are a lot of herbs that are really um, very, very potent and very um, good at that. And so I, I switch that every few, every couple, two to three weeks, I switch to a different remedy. And then I, we switch and switch until I can't detect it anymore uh, with muscle testing for a couple of times. And that can take a, a few months, but usually, you know, it's very effective and the animals feel better. Um, I do have one patient right now who... Um, it has been quite amazing that way. You know, we've done that. Um, um, she had some issues with um, the nervous system, with inflammation in the spinal cord. And so every couple of, uh, every two to three weeks, we've changed remedies and she's continued to improve. And she's um, almost off the steroids that help for, you know, to keep the inflammation down because inflammation in the nervous system can uh, be quite damaging to the animal and quite uncomfortable. Um, and cause neurologic signs. Uh, so anyways, it's, it's been quite nice to, to see and an and, and interesting um, learning experience as well because with every animal that I see, it's always a little bit different and something new to learn. So anyways, um, definitely flea, uh, I mean tick, tick-borne diseases can definitely be treated. And again, just because your dog um, did, you know, just because if your dog never has had a tick, doesn't mean they can't have the tick-borne diseases because they can be transmitted by other animals. Um, I mean, other insects. Uh, Robin, I lost my last dog due to flea and tick. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. Um, it's definitely, it can be, it can be um, challenging. And one of the best preventatives um, on the market, <laughs> so to speak, is to really make sure that your animals are healthy. So feeding them a species appropriate diet is very important. Making sure their gut is healthy because the gut, that's where all the microbes are that um, basically make the body work, including the immune system. So if you have a microbiome imbalance in the gut, um, then the immune system is not going to be as adapt, uh, you know, as, a, as able uh, to fight um, 
all these different diseases that it, that an animal can be exposed to. So those are very, very important. And then I also highly recommend doing detox. Uh, detox is very important. Um, I recommend doing that twice a year because we do live in a very polluted environment and, and the bodies, you know, all of our bodies need some regular detoxification to just clean out the gunk um, so that the immune system can work better. Because if the immune system is all focused on on cleaning out um, toxins because anytime you have toxins it creates inflammation and inflammation is basically the immune system being activated um, so the, if the immune system is busy doing other things it will not be as able um, you know to fight other things um, Capstar let me see I can't remember I think I looked it up yesterday <laughs> again I'm not as um, yeah, Capstar, um, I'm not sure what kind of infestation you're um, talking about. That is usually used for hookworms, roundworms, and whipworms. I see that. Um, I'd have to look it up. Sorry about that. I'm not familiar with all of the different chemicals, to be honest with you. Uh, there are just too many of them. Um, how do I dose milk thistle for detox, um, Jim? Uh, I would look at the label um, and then usually after, um, you know, after you gave a preventative uh, one time a day is, is usually enough for seven days is what I usually recommend. Um, Allison, you use HWF and it's great. Looks like you've had some good um, support with that. Um, Glenda, we moved to North Carolina. So use of HWF every other week for a preventative. Yes, and I would still um, definitely do regular heartworm checking. Um, you know, in the areas where there are more mosquitoes and more prevalence of heartworm, I would probably um, do it even three, four times a year um, just to make sure. Um, yeah, frozen, frozen, frozen. I'm sorry about that. That's when everything kind of went dark on my end. Um, Uh, Linda, can you do this again on an app? Um, because I missed how to treat my collies for fleas and ticks. I don't want to give them poison. Well, um, you can certainly re-listen to the live. It will be posted on my um, site. So you can go back to that. Um, but definitely using um, things such as herbal um, sprays, um, giving a little bit of garlic, um, cystus tea, for example, flea combing. Although with collies that may be a little bit more difficult. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how sensitive they are, but I used to take care of a couple of Afghan hounds and they hated when I brushed them. They were super sensitive. Um, but anyways, um, some of those things, amber stone collars can help, um, you know, doing the nematodes outside. So you definitely want to treat the animal and, and do the prevention on the animal, but you also want to prevent things kind of around uh, your house and, and where they are. Um, because with fleas, for example, what you see on the animal, um, on your dog, would only be about 5% of the fleas that are actually in your environment. So you definitely want to make sure that you also um, treat um, the environment. And then with trifexis, um, and that one is a milbamycin. Uh, but it also has uh, spinosads in it, uh, which is for um, fleas. And that would be a, uh, could be a bit of a problem for, for those animals that um, have seizures. So you definitely don't want to use them um, then. Uh, but milbamycin, that would be the same thing as is in um, Interceptor. But again, I prefer to have things separate so that you're not using you know, flea and tick preventatives and heartworm preventatives in the same week. So I'm not a huge fan um, of chemicals, period. Sometimes they are needed, but if you do use chemicals, I, I recommend um, just doing it more, you know, like split, not, you know, everything all at the same time. Um, um robin pages healthy paws definitely has hwf they also have al zoo and some other flea and tick preventatives um you can certainly check with them pages healthy paws is one of the pet stores in my neighborhood a little shout out to them uh they are awesome 
they have a lot of um, really fresh foods and um, yeah, very well educated people as well. If you haven't met Jody, definitely you should go meet her and Max, her dog. Um, and then Pat Russell, I feed fresh chopped garlic to my dog every morning in the raw breakfast. That's awesome. Um, thoughts on herbal topicals, colors and sprays like uh, Dr. Becker suggests and shell uh, suggests and sells. Um, Jim, yeah, um, definitely a great idea. Um, again, it probably takes multiple things to um, kind of keep things down, depending again on where you go for walks. I mean, if you're just walking around in your neighborhood on concrete, um, you know, on pavement, then the risk is very low. Probably um, if you go into the woods, there's higher risk. So it depends a little bit on where you're going and and the prevalence in your area. Um, can you order online? I'm not sure which you mean, but a lot of things can be ordered online. Although right now with the whole COVID-19 and such, a lot of the small businesses are hurting. So I highly recommend um, supporting them uh, rather than the big ones like the I won't mention any names, but you all know who I mean. Um, so I think that's that's really good. Um, and Kathleen Flea Flicker from Aroma Dog. We use Kin and Kind. Very good. Uh, Wonderside. There's some pros and cons on Wonderside. Some dogs do well with it, and some can get a bit of a reaction to it. Um, Wonderside, I believe, does have a little bit of um, corn in it so if you have a dog that has sensitivities um, to it to corn uh, food sensitivities you will have to be a little uh, more careful um, experience with amber collars again it very much depends on how prevalent it is some people say it works great some people say it doesn't do anything uh, so it very much depends I think it also depends on the animals uh, themselves because the healthier an animal is, the less attractive they are to fleas and ticks and heartworm uh, and mosquitoes in general. Um, because the sicker an animal is, the more CO2 they give up and that's more attractive to some to these insects. Um, and you probably have seen, you know, that in your maybe in your own household where, where one of the animals has a lot of fleas and the other one doesn't have any. Or, you know, with mosquitoes, you know, I always like to go outside at night with someone who's a mosquito magnet because they don't like me very much. But if I'm all by myself, then they, well, then, you know, they go after me too. But um, I think, you know, making sure that the animal is as healthy as possible will also help to deter them from, you know, being, um, you know, chewed up and infested. Um... Is there any way to have a printed type cliff note of this meeting? <laughs> well, um, I yeah, I did work on a on a whole thing. Yeah, maybe I'll post it. I'll have to look. Um, it probably needs a little work, but um, I'll work on it, Jonathan. Uh, but feel free to also just kind of you know review it and write things down for yourself. Uh, Alice and Chi, wildly blended F and T. Um, yes, I think that I'm not sure though what's in it. I I think you mentioned that in uh, I think one of the videos. I think I watched it briefly. Um, but yeah, there's so many things out there. Um, yeah, don't forget to check the dog's ears for ticks. Yes, and they can also get into the mouth between the gums, but not not very commonly. Uh, I can't see I've seen and say I've seen it, but I've seen pictures floating around on Facebook. And oh yes, maybe tick removal. Um, make sure you use one of these tick tools to um, grab the tick by the by the head, um, by the you know kind of where it's attached to the body, and not to squeeze the tick because when you squeeze the tick, you can actually um, create more injecting of of um, saliva which is where all these microbes would be so it's best to kind of remove it and with one of these little tick tools um what was the spray you use um uh, vetri repel is one of the sprays there are tons of them out there they all have very similar um, things in them such as um you know the geranium oil um, some of them have peppermint um, there are all kinds of different um, essential oils in there 
Um, and so there's a lot you can do. Um, and then, um, let's see. Hi, Carol. Um, spell, please. Spell that. I'm not sure what you want me to spell, um, Kathleen. Um, what is the name? I don't know what name you're looking for. Um, I'm kind of behind with all the posts, <laughs> so I'm just scrolling down. Uh, we use Baltic Raw Amber Stone colors. That's awesome. Clochette with a little bell helps too. Alice and she, okay, I'm not exactly sure what that is. <clears throat> um, yeah, diatomaceous earth can definitely be used. You just have to be careful because, it, first of all, it has to be food grade, as I mentioned earlier. And then uh, you want to make sure that uh, when you um, spray it around, you know, kind of put it around that it, there's not too much of it. Um, because when inhaled, it's not really um, all that helpful for the lungs. So you have to be a little bit careful on that, but it definitely will kill things. Um, I'm not a huge fan of diatomaceous earth um, internally because diatomaceous earth only works on and on parasites that have a hard, um, you know, shell basically. Uh, so it doesn't really work for um, the soft parasites that would be internally. Um, and then what is a good brand of amber colors? Uh, you have to make sure it's raw amber stone. Um, that's one of the things to look for. I think Amber Stone Pets uh, is one of the brands. Um, uh, yeah, and then, yeah, there are some a lot of topicals. Any general dog food brand recommendations? Well, uh, the ones that I like the best are uh, Raw Bistro, Answers, um, Small Batch. Any of the ones that are not high pressure pasteurized. Um, are, are awesome OC raw and then bones and co so there's a lot of them um, so it'll depend a little bit on what you can find at your pet store um, for indoors I use Baytical diluted um, not familiar with that one um, I'd have to look that up not sure what the ingredient is um, yes, there are a lot of uh, products on Dr. Becker's um, website, which, I mean, basically her products are on Dr. Uh, Mercola. Uh, Beta Call by Bayer. Well, um, I definitely have to look that one up. <laughs> because anything coming from any of the bigger pharmaceutical companies have to be kind of examined a little more closely. Um, what about after tick bites? Uh, so after a tick bite, um, I would definitely recommend some testing. Um, I usually run um, like a 4DX or a, a Accuplex, depending on the lab. Um, and then six weeks, four to six weeks after, uh, we can also run a Quant C6 uh, that measures a particular uh, protein um, that is only from um, from an active infection. Uh, because just because the the Acuplex or um, uh, 4DX comes back as positive doesn't mean that they're actually infected. It, it just means that they've been exposed, but they may have cleared the infection. So I'm not a huge fan of, of just going um, directly to antibiotics as soon as a, a tick um, bit, because I don't think that um, is very um, good for the immune system. All right, I got to go grab my plug real quick because my phone is telling me that the battery is low and I don't want to lose you guys. All right, here we go. But you can also use Leadum, uh, which is a homeopathic remedy. And there are different, um, well, let me just put the phone down for a second. I just got to plug it in. Um, here we go. All right. Uh, I can't multitask, it seems like, <laughs> one or the other. Um, anyway, so Leadum can be used. Um veterinarian who uses Leadum as a preventative. Um, let me just pull up his protocol because I forgot what it was. Okay, no, that was not the right file. But I can also post that later um, for sure. Um, the Leadum, 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 Leadum. 
I tried to cram all this information into my brain yesterday, did a lot of research um, to kind of, you know, improve and increase what I already know. <laughs> Unfortunately, my brain is getting a little old, you know, as you can see, lots of gray. Um, anyway, so lead them uh, three times a day for three days. Um, can be given after um, flea inv you know, tick infestation, especially if there are symptoms, and it doesn't matter if the symptoms are present now or if it was, you know, back then. So it doesn't matter how chronic it is, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Um, there are also some that use it as a preventative every four to eight weeks um, to decrease um, tick infestation, so certainly something that can be done. Um, some veterinarians um, will also use a, a no-sod for a Borrelia no-sod um, that can be given um, every day for a week and then once a week for a month and then every six months. Um, same for vaccine no-sods. Um, I do use no-sods as well. I have one that I use more for actual um, treatment afterwards and it doesn't have just Lyme in it. Um, it also has uh, a lot of the, you know, Bartonella, Rickettsia, Chlamydia, and all of the other um, microbes that can be transmitted um, through insects in there. Um, but I use it more for treatment, actually. But for my patients, what I usually do um, when they had a, a tick bite, I usually tell people to keep the tick because you can also send it into a lab to see uh, what kind of microbes were in that tick. Um, so that can be very helpful. Um, I just had a client do that the other day and it came back as just having Borrelia in it, so none of the other ones. And so we're going to work on on just, you know, helping the body, uh, um, you know, deal with that. Um, I don't think the symptoms um, at this point. Because again, um, they can become chronic and just hide in, in different places. I see them hide in the kidneys. I see them hide in the vagus nerve, which is the long nerve that affect, that innervates all the internal organs. In the brain, um, obviously. Um, so all of these microbes, they can hide in different places. And, and some, some of them, uh, you even have to do a little bit more than just muscle testing um, uh, to, to have them come out because they can be so... Mm -hmm. Um, hidden in a way. Um, I had one dog that I was working with who had it just in one joint in, in a little toe, but it would only show up if I, if I was um, trimming her nails first, so creating some vibration, and that kind of got them to kind of pop out. Um, so that was, um, yeah, uh, it can be challenging, but it can definitely be done. Um, yeah, rosemary, you definitely don't want to use that for um, seizures. Uh, yes, babesiosis can also be tested for. Um, will a lower dose of lidum work? Um, you'd have to do some experimenting. Um, you know, homeopaths, they don't really like it when you use things preventatively that way, so they are much more specific. Um, so what may work for one dog may not work for another, you know, so some people will use uh, lead them at a lower, um, uh, you know, potency, like 60 uh, or 30 C, and, and some will use it as a higher um, uh, potency, like 200 C or 1 M. So I guess it um, always depends. And um, yes, you would put the pellet um, in their gum, you know, in their mouth away from food. Um, so when would you treat a dog if Lyme disease test is positive, uh, right away? Um, <laughs> basically I would get started, um, with muscle testing to see which, um, remedy works the best in that moment. Um, does anyone know the best way to prevent hookworms? Um, I would just do testing to see if there are any in the stool samples. Uh, if not, then I probably wouldn't worry too much about that. Just keeping them healthy um, is a good way to do that. Is there a way to prevent Giardia? Um, yeah, good health, good microbiome um, for sure. If they do have Giardia, then you definitely need to do some treatment and that can be a little bit um, but for another another um, detox suggestions. Uh,
Um, Limoxicil is a good one. I also use Five Leaf Pet Botanicals. They have a very good protocol that I use for my patients. Um, amber color, yeah, must be used 24-7. It has to stay on the body for it to work. Um, primal child watching. Uh, do I believe in vitamins for dogs or something natural? That would be a whole other, um, <laughs> for another time. Um, I can certainly, um, do that at some point. Uh, Pennsylvania actually has a lab that does it for free. I'm assuming that you're talking about, uh, flea and, uh, about tick testing. Um, well, that's good to know. Um, I would love to know which lab that is. Um, all right, so I think I got to the end of all the questions. Oh, that was so awesome. You guys had such good questions and um, I so appreciate you listening in and um, I think I'm gonna stop now so that you guys can all go and enjoy your Sunday. It is nice and sunny here. I'm probably gonna go out and hang out in my garden and putz around a little bit, um, get a little bit of vitamin D. Um, so yeah, definitely another really important thing for health for the animals go outside, you know, have them, you know, eat some dirt and play around and, you know, and go for walks, you know, exercise is so, so important. It's probably one of the most important things for health. Um, so anyways, yeah, go out there, have a good time and thanks so, so much for joining and um, feel free to share and listen again. I know there was a lot of information and I will work on a um, on the cliff notes as requested. It may take me a few days, but I will do that. So thanks so much, you guys. Love you all. Bye.